Let's take a look at some of the different ways that geographic information systems can help us to analyze, study, and really explore our world. We're going to take a look at some local issues and data all the way up to global issues and data. So multiple scales looking at different themes in both two dimensions and three dimensions. Let's chat for a few moments about why use GIS to study geography? With GIS, students investigate real issues that are critical to our communities, our regions, our countries, and our world. It is difficult to think of a discipline that is as critical as geography. Geography is concerned with every key issue of the 21st century. Climate, biodiversity, urban sprawl, habitat, sustainability, energy, water quality and availability, natural hazards, politics, agriculture, population change, and much more. This slide says it all. We have a finite planet with finite resources. We need to live in a sustainable way. GIS is a perfect tool for studying geography because GIS was created to be an inquiry-based problem-solving toolkit. GIS nudges students toward the top of Bloom's taxonomy, getting them to evaluate, to synthesize, to analyze, and to apply. Through GIS, students use maps, satellite images, graphs, and databases that are focused on the question of where to analyze patterns, trends, and influences in the past, present, and future. Each of the issues we discussed above are intricately tied to locations and affected by spatial relationships – mountains, ocean currents, climate, vegetation, human impact, and much more. With GIS, students can do these three things. They are involved with scholarship learning critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Citizenship, becoming active community participants. And artisanship, gaining key workforce skills. Through GIS, students analyze data, they make decisions, they form values, and they are empowered to make a difference in our world. Students gain valuable skills in the use of GIS, including critical thinking, spatial thinking, data management, file formatting, and the use of multimedia. GIS makes extensive use of the geographic inquiry process. Asking geographic questions, acquiring geographic resources, exploring geographic data, analyzing geographic information, and finally, acting on geographic knowledge, which sometimes leads to a new question. These skills will be valued if the student moves into a GIS analyst or management position. But even if they pursue other fields, because spatial analysis is increasingly embedded in business, human health, planning, transportation, natural resources, and in many other fields, Let's spend a few minutes exploring what we can do with GIS in education. One of the most powerful things that people have been doing in the last few years is putting their GISs online. So, for example, the ESRI Mapping for Everyone site. As the name implies, it allows you to create and share maps for free. Let's scroll over here and see what we have when we pull up this web page, just out of an ordinary web browser. I can see the median household income for states. Hmm. I wonder why that variability occurs. Why do some states have a lower income and some states have a higher income? As we drill down, we can see county level data. Hmm. Interesting variability. And now I'm going to zoom into Omaha, Nebraska, Council Bluffs, Iowa. 
I can definitely see that the median income now by census tract varies as I move around the city. Let's say now that I want to change the variable. Hmm. Let's take a look at unemployment rate now. Hmm. The income was lower here. The unemployment rate is higher. That makes sense. What about median age? Are there younger people in those neighborhoods? Yes, there are. Older people out here to the west and to the east. Let's take a look at another web GIS called the National Atlas or nationalatlas.gov. Let's say I want to make a quick map of cotton production. Hmm. There are definitely some patterns that I notice. I've got a southerly influence here. With one click of the mouse, I've made a cotton production map by county from the agricultural statistics data. Now let's say I'm interested in looking at some invasive species. With just a few clicks, what I have now are zebra mussel distributions in the United States. I can see the relationship between zebra mussels and how they must move, that is, along streams. I can also see where their homeland was, their source, right here in the Great Lakes.